Welcome to a progression guide in 2024 when it comes to Unturned Washington. In this video, we are going to go over multiple chapters. First chapter is going to be best places to loot. It's going to be best places to build, how to get trading gear, and a few tips and tricks for Washington that I may have. Now, this guide is going to be strictly mainly for beginners, but if you do have some experience in Unturned, then you're free to watch, and maybe you'll get yourself some new tips and tricks. If it's your first time here, I would really appreciate if you guys subscribe, and drop a like. If we reach 200 likes, then I'll drop one for Russia, where that one is a bit more detailed, since Russia is obviously a larger map, and there's a lot more stuff happening in that map and today we're going to roll a mythical giveaway which is a sky lantern spiritual separator if you guys want to win this make sure that you have liked the video subscribed and comment something below and if you are a channel member you also have a higher chance of winning this mythical today's video is sponsored by pine hosting are you guys trying to start your own unturn server and have no clue where to start then check out pine hosting Point hosting is super easy to learn, the navigation is also very user friendly and not hard at all to learn. All the servers have really high performance with DDoS protection. When I started my own servers, I had no idea how to do anything, but after a few minutes I learned the basics. They have locations all around the globe, the pricing is also very cheap, and they also have a variety of game servers to choose from, including Rust, Arc, and also Minecraft. A really good feature by Pine Hosting is the ability to install plugins and mods just by clicking once. If you have a server with another provider, Pine Hosting can help you move them as well. Make sure to check out Pine Hosting today and use the code LDG for 30% off, and let's get started into the guide. So as I mentioned earlier, first things first is we're going to go over to the best places to load. Now in Washington, one of my favorite things about this map is the fact that there are multiple military locations that aren't just Olympia military base. If you open the map, you can see that there's a bunch of areas spread around the whole map, unlike PI, which is just on one side of the map where there's Confederation and Summerside. But on Washington, you can find military loot on all corners of the map, literally. So let, but let's start off with the main city, which is Seattle. Now Seattle is a pretty large city, but from here you can find yourself a lot of items. Over here you can find literally everything that you want. There's a military checkpoint area, there's the mechanic which is important for blowtorches, there's a hospital for meds, food if you need food, and over at the bank you can also find ranger loot. So... On extreme cases, you can even find yourself rocket launchers from there, Zobax and Metamorosis. So I do recommend that you check out Seattle. Something else that I like about Seattle is that there's also a helicopter spawn. There's also a lot of tanks where you can get yourself fuel. And importantly as well, there are high tier spawn nodes where you can get yourself dragon fangs, grenades, detonators, elite specs. And there's also a mega zombie spawn right underneath the bridge. So I definitely do recommend that you guys check out Seattle if you are going to play on Washington. Over there, make sure that you are careful when it comes to the two large buildings because a lot of people do camp up there with snipers. Next, let's go over to Olympia Military Base, which is the main military base. Now, Olympia Military Base is quite close to Seattle. There are a few spawn nodes around as well where you can spawn very, very, very close. And over here, quite straightforward, it's just a military base, but mega zombies also spawn here. Military helicopter spawns, APC spawns, Euro spawns, and Humvee spawns. This area is usually a hotspot for PvP as well, so before you get here, I do recommend that you have yourself any sort of weapon, because if you just go in there completely naked, chances are you may die unless you get yourself a gun very early on a lot of items spawn here there are a lot of high tier spawn nodes especially in the bunker at the very back another location that i am a fan of and i think it is a bit underrated nowadays not a lot of people actually go here but it is heritage valley which is the ranger spawn area now over here you can get yourself mainly zubeknokov metamoris snipers kios and rocket launchers but you can also get yourself all ranger attachments so ranger barrels muzzles uh, 7x scopes so i do recommend that you come here even if you just get a few attachments it is pretty nice there's also a mechanic spawn where you can get yourself blow torches so the food spawn you can get yourself certain backpacks as well and over here i do recommend that perhaps you can also build bases but we'll go into base building uh in a few minutes another military base that we can also recommend to go to is paradise point now paradise point is just another Military base, it is a smaller base though than Olympia because over here you can get yourself construction and medical, medical spawns. But there's also a few oil tanks, there's a few high tier spawn nodes and you can get yourself some weapons as well. Next let's go over to Scorpion 7 which in my opinion is one of the best locations to go to when you just start on a server. Scorpion 7... There are Shadow Stalker spawns, Viper spawns, and at the entrance there's also a few military spawns. So you can get yourself Heartbreakers, Sabers, Peacemakers, and Avengers, for example. After that, I do recommend that you guys also go to the close military checkpoint, which is uh, very, very close to Scorpion 7. Over here, there's a few high-tier spawn nodes as well inside the, uh, the rubble of the broken car. 
and on the gun racks right underneath the tower. And that is another thing that I will actually want to mention. Around the map, there are various unmarked military locations. So there are various checkpoints, there are various convoys, and there's also the helicopter crash, which we are going to talk about very soon. But these locations are perfect if you just started out on the server. Rather than going to Olympia or Seattle, I would recommend you go to these convoys or to these checkpoints, this is what I usually do, and try to get yourself a weapon from there. You can get literally everything, the only thing is that there's just a less amount of spawn nodes over there, you can literally get yourself everything from there as well. So these convoys and checkpoints are the following. First of all, there's one right next to Kamano Campground, over there is four broken cars, but there's also, in each car there's also a high tier spawn node. Right above Bellevue Golf Course, there is the helicopter crash over there the mega zombie also spawns so if you're lucky enough and you kill the mega zombie over there you can get literally seven high tier items from there between arlington farm and Kent Traceway, you can get yourself a convoy and a checkpoint they're very very close to each if you're close to one i recommend checking them both and the one that we just mentioned the one above scorpion 7 also, something else that I may mention is that there is a sunken submarine next to Shelton Farm. Literally, I have never seen people go there, but if you're lucky enough, you can get yourself some ranger spawns. So, for example, a Zubek or a rocket launcher, but they are quite rare because there's not a lot of spawn nodes over there, but you can get yourself, for example, like Bandana or 7X or something like that. Now, since I've went over all of the good locations that you can check, obviously the farms, you can get yourself a chainsaw and, you know, farm weapon. So, Schofield, Hawkhound, Master Key, or a bow. Now, what I recommend me personally this is what I do when I play Washington is the best progression when it comes to locations that you go for first things first is you go to a farm and from a farm for example let's say we spawned close to Shelton farm so if we're over at Shelton farm we lose Shelton farm and then after that we head over to Scorpion 7. If there's people over there, then we can easily take them out because hopefully we get ourselves a weapon from Shelton Farm. So what I usually go for is go for a farm, then go for a mid-tier loot location. So for example, Scorpion 7, Paradise Point, or Convoys, or Checkpoints. After that, I would start getting my base down so that I would have myself some loot as well. And after that, we start going to high tier locations. So for example, C Seattle or Olympia or Heritage Valley. We go to that side of the map. That is usually the progression that I go for when it comes to looting. Next, let's go over to the other chapter, which is the best places to build. Now, before we get into this chapter, obviously, it is Washington. It is a very small map. You're gonna get raided probably unless you decide to dedicate a lot of time into building a sky base. Then you are probably going to get raided. But what you can do is you can delay the time until you get traded. So, what I'm going to tell you about in this chapter is some locations that I personally build a lot in. And they usually take around like a day to get raided. And these locations are close to usually convoys. So, for example, a location that I have been building a lot recently is very close to Kamano Campground. Kamano Campground, there is the convoy over there. There's Seattle close and obviously military base is also pretty close. Another location that I usually usually do like to build in is behind Kennewick farm because over there we are close to Olympia military base and to the helicopter crash site and also to Seattle and not a lot of people actually go to Kennewick farm and another location that I recommend is for example behind Paradise Point. Usually people go behind Paradise Point to check if there are bases to raid but obviously this depends on the server you're playing, the population of the server that you're on but usually those are the locations that I will go for. Something else that I actually do recommend on this map is actually building an underwater base. Now an underwater base on this map I would recommend for is between Clearwater Campground and Scorpion 7. I have built multiple underwater bases there and they usually last for a few days and what I do not recommend is that you build very close to Olympia military base so building a base between Olympia military base and Heritage Valley is a definite not a good idea building close to Seattle at the bottom side of the map where there's Ringbridge Island I don't recommend that I don't recommend building on any island in general because the island there's a lot of spawns very close so even if a high tier player dies and he sees your base, he would know that there's a, a base there and he would just come back later and radio. Another location that I can perhaps also recommend is if you build west of Shelton Farm. Over there, there's a few hills and you can actually build a base there. As I said in the beginning though, probably you are going to get raided. On Unturned, every map that you play on, you will get raided eventually unless you build like a 50 by 50 fort with a billion centuries outside, but realistically, if you're watching this video, you probably are not going to be doing that. If you guys would like, perhaps if I show you a guide how to build a sky base and sky base locations as well. Next, let's go over to the next chapter, which is how to get raiding gear. Now, 
On Washington, there are various ways to actually get raiding gear, and it is very easy to get raiding gear. On other maps, so for example, like Arid, Escalation, and all of that, to get raiding gear, you would need to progress the map, but on Washington, you just need to be lucky and get yourself a lucky spawn. So for example, on Washington, once you get yourself a good start, then you start focusing on raiding gear. So after you get yourself a base down and you can start looting the Seattle and Olympia military base, I would recommend that you focus on getting mega zombie kills. So there are three mega zombie spawns on this map we've mentioned earlier, which are Seattle, Olympia, and the helicopter crash site. So what I would usually do is I would circle around those three areas until I get myself a mega zombie spawn, kill the mega zombie spawn and hope for a detonator or a dragon fang. So that is what I usually do, but there are other methods. So you can go to Heritage Valley and get yourself a rocket launcher. You can hope for airdrops, but usually airdrops don't really have anything when it comes to raiding gear. But going back to airdrops, over there you can actually... There was a recent update where you can get yourself demolition charges and detonators. So I do recommend that if there's an airdrop close to you, you check it out. Because charges and detonators actually spawn there nowadays. And there's also a very underrated raiding method, which is using the Shadow Stalker. But this is usually very effective for when it comes to raiding wooden bases. It only takes a few rails to actually raid the wooden base. So I do recommend that you the Shadow Stalker and rails. I don't recommend raiding with snipers. So I don't recommend raiding with Grizzly or Metamores. I would rather use Grizzlies and Metamoris for PvP since they are very very strong for PvP as well. Now if you guys didn't know how to craft charges, it is very simple. All you need is raw explosives and frag grenades which you will find in military locations. The raw explosive is a normal spawn so even normal zombies can drop it. But grenades usually are dropped by mega zombies or they are spawned as a high tier uh, spawn. And for charges you also need crafting 3 and wire which you would need to get some scrap and a blowtorch. To reveal your dragon thing you need high caliber military ammo. This comes the same with grizzly and Cimberwolf. And to refill Metamoris you need high caliber ranger ammunition. Now if you guys didn't know Nykaravs and Hellseries don't trade anymore which was a very old update but some of you guys may still think that they do raid. Obviously there's still the rocket launcher. The rocket launcher can be found in ranger spawns and in order to craft rockets you would need a demolition charge and you would need a rock explosive. So next let's go over some tips and tricks that I may not have mentioned. Um, there's only a few. Also very close to Clearwater and Bellevue there is a dead zone. Now you can actually just run in there with a few dressings. You don't really need to get yourself a biohazard hood. Already you can't really get anything special though. You can get vipers, rails, chemicals and like vaccines, vitamins and cough syrup. But next we have ourselves the horde beacons. Now if you guys didn't know horde beacons can be crafted and you need a detonator for that. So I don't recommend using your only detonator to do that. Only do that if you have a second detonator or third or whatever. And from there you can get high tier raiding loot. So for example like Dragon Fangs, Dragon Fang boxes, High Caliber, Matsamorises. And there you can also get yourself high tier PvP weapons. So Devil's Banes, PDWs. And don't do it at a hotspot. I won't recommend doing it at any marked location. What I would recommend is you do it at a convoy or a checkpoint or even at a farm. And something that a lot of you probably already know but if you're new you may not know this. If you go to Olympia military base and jump on the wall and there is a mega zombie, you just shoot the mega zombie once and the mega zombie will be lured towards you and then just use a melee to kill the mega zombie. He will not be able to hit you if he throws rocks, just don't move. He will not He will not touch you from there. If you get too close, he may be able to hit you, but just keep yourself a bit of a distance, just enough for the melee to actually hit him. If you have a chainsaw, it's like, it only takes like a minute to actually kill the mega zombie. So that's something that I do recommend. And that is it for this progression guide. I really hope that you guys did learn something new. As I mentioned earlier, if you guys want a progression guide for Rush Hour PI or whatever, let me know. We already have a few progression guides for Escalation, Buak, and Polaris, so if you guys want to check them out, feel free. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!